Greetings to each and every one of you. We have a special broadcast for you this evening. And uh, it is Sabbath year in the UK, but in another part of the world, uh, Sister Gabrielle, is it uh, Sabbath yet over there? No, not yet. Yeah. No, not yet. And as you could see, uh, we have Sister Gabrielle Gangada, who is our guest speaker, who has a very, very important story about her life that she is going to share with us. And I believe this is going to be a wake-up call for our people, Seventh-day Adventist brothers and sisters around the world. But before we get into what she has to share with us, we are going to invite the Lord in our midst. Loving Father God, which art in heaven, we want to thank you, Father, that you have given us this opportunity to share with others the trials, the endurance, the long suffering that many of us are experiencing and going through at this moment. And this is the case with my dear sister who is about to share something with us, I believe will help our brothers and sisters to wake up to understand the spiritual warfare that we are in, how the enemy is attacking us on the inside. And as it was prophesied, and as it happened to Christ himself, we are seeing the same thing taking place right before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would take control of our minds, our thoughts, and the words that proceed out of our mouth. We pray that it will be seasoned with salt. And as a result of putting this video together, your name will be glorified. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, my dear sister, uh, once again, I would like to welcome you for joining us and for taking the time to share with us. We have been communicating. You have been sharing with me a little bit here and there about your story for the past month, I believe. And it was just a matter of time before we could find the time to sit down and to share with our brothers and sisters what has been going on with you and especially where you are right now. Well, by the way, tell us where you are. Um, so I'm currently here in Bermuda, and that is to the east of North Carolina and South Carolina, all the way out in the ocean. So not too far from the shores of the United States of America. And uh, this is where she's joining us right now from. And uh, without further ado, let's start from the beginning, of course. Tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of background before we get deeper into your story. Now, by the way, this is going to be part one of what she has to share with us. We'll have part two, by God's grace, at uh, another time. So tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of background. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Emmanuel, for your ministry and what you have been doing. Um, just just want to use this time to say, may God continue to use you and your team, your family, um, to carry forward the work. Uh, my name is Gabriel Gangadar. Um, I'm a high school math teacher. Um, I love the Lord. My passion is medical missionary. Um, I've started training at Wildwood in Georgia. Last year, I went down to do my hydrotherapy and massage um, practicals. Um, that was a blessing. So right now, that's what I'm currently doing now here in Bermuda with um, my other medical missionary friends. Um, I love the Lord with all my heart, and I want to finish the work so that he can come soon. Amen, amen. Beautiful. I, I mean... What you are doing over there in Bermuda uh, tells uh, a lot 
about uh, what we should be doing right now when it comes to medical mission medical missionary work which is really the right arm of the third angel message as sister white said now what do you have to share with us what has been taking place in your life over there in bermuda okay so um so i didn't say but i'll probably share a little bit more about my background as i tell my story so i am from i am Jama from uh, i'm originally jamaican um, I left Jamaica to go to Taiwan, where I spent 10 years um, teaching ESL, English as a Second Language. Got married in Taiwan, um, had my son. He's now eight years old. Um, and I just want to say, I don't want to start my story with a Bible verse. It's taken from Matthew 5, where my favorite scripture is found. Matthew 5, 16 is my favorite scripture. But verse 11 and verse 12 is what I want to read before I start my story. It says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The Bible says we should rejoice and be exceeding glad. And the reason yeah. is because it says, great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So this is an encouragement and a precursor to what I'm about to share. Um, so I've entitled my little sharing persecuted, but not forsaken, according to Second Corinthians Amen. chapter four. So I came in Bermuda October 29 last year. That's 2021. Uh, my son and I. Um, it's just us in my family right now, based on the circumstances. Um, but I praise God. So when I came, I had to quarantine because I do not believe in taking the, I believe you guys call it a Babylonian poison. So <laughs> I, right. I had to quarantine for two weeks. So during those two weeks in November, I, I was teaching online at Bermuda Institute so a little background about Bermuda. Bermuda is 21 square miles. It's very tiny. The population is about 60,000, I believe. So it's a very small place. So it's a very, you know, very rich country, very popular for tourist destinations. So that's a little background. Very beautiful also. So I started working, um, as I said, the first two weeks online. And then by the third week, I came in on campus to meet the students, the staff, and everyone. Um, they were so, you know, wonderful. Um, and, you know, the first Sabbath, I got invited to the principal's home. Um, and there was, like, the pastor of the mother church. There was a school pastor and his wife. There were a lot of people present. So I felt so welcome, you know. And then the second Sabbath, um, you know, I was invited again to the principal's home. Um, and there was only one guest. My son had gone to a pastor with a not with a pastor and his his family because they were their son and my son are in the same class. So it was just me that went to the principal's house along with another teacher. So I was there and I was hoping for someone to, you know, some other folks to come by, but I didn't see anyone. Anyway, so we started eating. While we were having lunch, the principal said to me something that made me very uncomfortable. He said, you need more meat on your bones. And I was taken aback because I was like, this is my boss. This is an Adventist school. Um, a principal should not be saying something so uncomfortable. So I looked across to the, you know, the teacher that was present and she she understood what I was trying to, to say. So she said she turned to him and, and he and she said to him, not everybody's fat stick on like yours. So it was like a little jet, like a rebuke to him. Anyway, right. to just summarize that that Sabbath. Um, the pastor, a pastor's wife was coming to pick me up to do some ministry, like in the evening. They usually go out, give out, you know, tracks and so on, like an outreach. So she had told me to, she had told me earlier to change into something more, to something more comfortable. So, right. you know, she called me on the phone and she said, I'm on my way. So I said, oh, you know, I spoke to the principal. I said, sir, um, miss so-and-so is coming on her way to come and pick me up. Is there a place where I can change? 
So he looked at me and he said, oh, Miss Gangadar, you can change anywhere. You can change even right there in front of me. So I was like so shocked at this moment. Um, I looked over to the teacher and the teacher was like, don't mind him. He's always joking. He's just like that. He's, you know, so I just quickly dashed into a very tiny bathroom that they, that, you know, that was on the first floor. I just changed my clothes. And then, um, you know, the pastor's wife came for me. And I, I shared this because this was my first experience. You know, it set the tone for the whole semester. And this mm -hmm. happened, you know, the I think it was the last Sabbath in November. You know, it was my second Sabbath out of quarantine. And then the following week, um, the principal took me to open my bank account. We came back to the school and then he asked me, you know, like if I needed help. And I said, yes, I needed help with a program called RENWEB, which is where we put in our grades. So he said, come to his office. I went to his office. He helped me. And then, you know, I was leaving the office and he accompanied me to the door of the office. And he said to me, um, are you, you know, something like you're invited to come to my home at third Sabbath? I said, no, sir. I, you know, just thinking of what had happened the previous Sabbath, I didn't want to go because I was very uncomfortable, but I was trying to be respectful I'm kind, gentle, you know, everything that a Christian is supposed to be or a human is supposed to be. So he he was saying, you know, he kept pushing me like, come, you know, you're not, you know, and I, and I wasn't, I was trying to think, how do I answer him to let him know, like, I'm not, you know, interested in what's going on. So I kept quiet for a little while and he kept saying, oh, you're not answering me. You're not answering me, Miss Gangadar, you're not answering me. And he kept, you know, he was a little bit closer to me. And I was just looking like he was right there in front of the door. Like anybody could have walked past, like the administrative assistant, you know, somebody else in the office. And he just seemed like he didn't, you know, he wasn't aware of his environment. So I felt so uncomfortable. And I just said, sir, I need to go finish my work. So I left and I went to my classroom. So, you know, things escalated, um, Pastor Emmanuel, um, you know, in in mo many schools, they have like an end of semester um, dinner. So mm -hmm. there was an end of semester dinner in December. And at this particular function, it was all about Santa Claus. There were a lot of gifts, you know, and very good gifts. I even got a magic bullet. Because my Nutribullet, I left it in North Carolina in my barrel. I was supposed to get it. I didn't get it. So, God, you know, I, I got this as a gift. You just, you know, the things that they do at function, you know, end of semester function. But the part that made me uncomfortable was the old Santa Claus. Um, you had to give yourself a Santa name, write your Santa name on a sticker and put it on your on your clothes. Maybe in part two, I can show you some of these pictures. Um, you know, a little bit more. So like, for example, if your name was Tanisha, then you would be tipsy something, mm -hmm. something. And, and tipsy, it, it means drunk, right? You don't, you wouldn't think of, of this to be happening in a Seventh-day Adventist institution. So wow. yeah, I, I excuse, I, you know, I, I, I use the opportunity to just asked for the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and I was just in the bathroom, not using the bathroom, but actually praying for forgiveness aloud. It was a two compartment bathroom. No one was in the now, bathroom. Now, now this was happening at the school, right? Yes. Last year, December. Last no, year. It, okay. it was at a, at a, it was a function at a restaurant. Okay. Yeah. But it was the school function, the end of semester, um, you know, get together. Yeah. Some right. school, yeah. I think some worldly schools call it a Christmas party or a Christmas, you know, but I don't want to use that that term. Right, so, I understand. Right. So I was just in the bathroom just praying. I said, you know, praying for forgiveness for what we're doing, what we are, you know, it was all about Santa Claus, listen, listen, li I think listening to Santa Claus songs and writing which ones they are. And it was just, a, everybody was dressing up in elf suit, even down to the shoes was Christmas shoes you know with colors and l's and all of that and it just made me feel uncomfortable because i think in my you know ellen white talks about this it's very clear in the spirit of prophecy that you know as seven day adventists um we're not supposed to be celebrating christmas right right yeah so that happened another thing that happened was our fall concert they had an online fall concert and in the fall concert they had the dress was just, you know, you had students 
with off the shoulder, you know, your whole shoulder is showing. And I mentioned to one of my coworkers, and I didn't go to the principal. I just mentioned to one of my coworkers, I said, if we're going to put something on YouTube, we have to represent the standards of our doctrine, right? Amen. So I mentioned that. So what happened was that the principal heard me commenting on the Christmas and the fall concert. He called me into his office on the January of this year, and he reprimanded me for our doctrines. So, so, so just one moment. So he reprimanded you because you were teaching and or helping uh, and pointing out the things that do not represent seven day adventists and especially uh those things that they are broadcasting on youtube right is that correct yes yeah, so the first thing he talked to me about was the christmas the christmas dinner because he had i didn't right. go to him and talk to him i said it to one i think one or two of my co-workers about how i felt about the christmas i mean the end of year dinner mm -hmm. yes okay Okay. Yeah, so he he basically was very upset. He was upset that I should be talking this this way, and I was like shocked because in my estimation and in my thoughts, I'm thinking he's the principal. A principal of a Seven Day Adventist school should be the one, you know, directing. Or if not, if you have too much workload, then the vice principal or another administrator would be the one directing and making sure that the 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 doctrines of the Seven Day Adventist um of, of us as Seventh Day Adventists is, is upheld because even right. though we're in a local restaurant, I believe it's still a witness. Right. Yes. Now the conversation, the, 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 the conversation he started having with you was that the uh, private conversation or was that uh, yes, yes. Open. In fact, okay. in fact, I would just interject to say that he he called me on the first day back to school in January. I think it was January the fourth. He asked me if I could come to his office to. He wanted to talk to me, but I wasn't able to go that day. So he said, I said, can I come tomorrow, which was the following day. So the following day, I went to his office um, after we had a staff meeting in the evening. And that's how we started out. He was like, how was the he wasn't there at the staff dinner. He he was not at that um, function. Um, so he was just asking me how it was. And then I tried not to talk about it. I just said it was good, you know, but didn't get into details. I see. Okay. And uh, and then what happened after that? So after, after he got reprimanded. Yeah, for, so for those two things, for speaking about, you know, Christmas and um, dress, you know, dressing when you're presenting yourself, you know, on a public platform as YouTube, because that was our fall concert was broadcast on YouTube. So after that, I noticed he was very mad with me from January all the way down. In fact, in March... Um, my son, somebody in my son's class, grade two, had COVID. March of this year, right? Was it yeah, March, March of this, this year? Because I only came October last year, so this school right, year, right. you know. Well, yeah. I, I, I just, I just would like our viewers to to understand that this is not something that happened last year or a long time ago, but this is something recent. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. So March of this year, um, my somebody in my son grade two class had COVID, and I, I was in email con correspondence with him you know i told him you know i have to take my son because he had sent out an email on the sunday that all the students have to be tested negative a pcr test before they can return to school so i was in dialogue email with him and i said you know i'm going to take my son um this is the time that i got what do you want me to do do you want me to teach online when i get back um you know i set work for my students i had everything on google classroom so everything was done in fact i even called the school and i spoke to another admin i said please make sure the students get to do the work because of the situation anyway when i got back from you know the you know the testing site uh i checked my email and i saw a very you know shocking email it was like he was bullying me so he was saying, how did you leave your class of 70 plus students? Who's going to take care of them? And I was like shocked because I left my work of asking for direction. So I realized that it probably was stemming from something more. It could have been because I was speaking about our doctrines, you know, sharing doctrine. Right. And I, I, I am not a person who is going to be up in your face with doctrine. You know, God has, 
um, really touched my heart and changed me. You know, so I love truth, Pastor Emmanuel. I love what is true. Yeah. And I love people. I don't like, oh, you're going to hell. I'm not that, that kind of person. I ask the Lord, Lord, give me that, that gentleness that you have. But but not not at the expense of truth, not at the expense of compromising. You understand what I mean? So I, I, I want to share the truth, but at the same time, I will never bow or compromise. So in that yeah. way, I was like steadfast, you know, as the scripture said, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So I re recognized that he was so mad with me. So what I did in March of this year was reach out to the conference president. And I said, well, sir... Be yeah. Before before we get to the conference, President, um, what exactly can you share at least a little bit with us uh, what was said uh, in the email that he sent you? You said that, yeah, that so, he, he was bullying you. Uh, yeah, what, did, yeah. what exactly did he say? Yeah, he was saying, yeah, I think I just shared it. He was saying, who is going to, like, basically he was saying, I left my class without you know, doing anything. And that was not okay. true. And he said, who's going to take care of your student, you know, your students. And, you know, so it was a form of like bullying. Like he was right. Yeah, and he, so you, and you never really left your class. No, I'd communicated to him that I am going to take my son because my son at the time was seven years old. So I cannot send right. my son to go and do his PCR test by himself. So these right. are grade two students. So most of the parents is either they're going to stop from work or a grandmother or someone. But me being a um, a foreigner in Bermuda, I have to take my son to do the COVID test. So I had said to him, sir, would you, when I come back from doing the COVID test, I can continue teaching online. Please instruct me what to do. But the email that he sent to me was like, how can I abandon my class? Which I did not. So, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So something like that. Okay. So now uh, you mentioned the conference president. Now you, you went to the conference president. Is that correct? I called him. I called him on the phone because you called him. Okay. Yeah. Because of the jokes that he was making about my body and, you know, ch taking off my clothes in front of him. I didn't appreciate those jokes, but I forgave wait, him. Wait, let's, let's back up for a moment. So what, what was he telling you? Uh, you're referring to, is that the pastor, the, uh, the the principal? The principal, yes. Remember I said the second Sabbath I was at his house. Second, he was uh, telling uh, me, correct. like, I need to put more meat on my bones and jokingly tell me I can change right. my clothes in front of him. Um, right. I didn't appreciate those, but I forgave him. You know, I know we all struggle. So I forgave him. It made me uncomfortable, but still I forgave him. Then okay. in January, he also discriminated me. He, You know, when we talked about that Christmas, the end of staff dinner, and the the fall concert when we talk about the dress on the YouTube when he called right. me into that meeting he also talked about how I dress in a very okay. discriminat discriminat discriminating way so right. he was you know talking about how how my, how I wear dress you know coming to school and not everybody want to dress like you all of that happened in January in that January meeting now when when he starts talking about the way you dress, you don't dress provocatively. You uh, you dress conservatively, uh, and, but he's rebuking that. Is that correct? That's the way I felt. I felt he was like discriminating against the way I dress because I wear like skirts, like long skirts to school. Sometimes just above my, you know, I follow dress reform. Put it that right. way. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, that's that's ex that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, so, I, I, I apparently, uh, which is sounds something uh, uh, very much like what is going on in our world today. You see, right now, anything that that's good for you, it seems like the power that be is against it, and we have the same mentality. In our world today, well, let me give you an example. Like, for example, during the uh, the coronavirus pestilence in in uh, in twenty twenty, uh, they did not want us to be exposed to the sun. You know, vitamin D, which is very good, which which was proven to to help you against coronavirus, Correct. but they didn't want you to have that. So we have the a similar mentality within within our church today, within Seventh-day Adventism, 
when it comes to what, the doctrines, the pillars of our faith that make us who we are as a people. It, I, I experienced that a uh, long time ago, years ago, when, when I was with a conference, like I would be uh, preaching about the mark of the beast, uh, Sunday law and so on. They did not want to hear that. And so what you experience there is 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 a new movement that has been going on within seventh day adventism whereas as sister white prophesied in selected messages volume uh two page 204 and 205 a new organization a new movement within the church that is against the principles uh, bible principles and spirit of prophecy go ahead Yes, I think that's the same thing I think I was feeling. And uh, Pastor Emmanuel, I want to point out too that this is my first year in a seven-day Adventist school. All my years of my life, I've been in public and private school. In fact, I was just coming from North Carolina in a public school. So, okay, okay. Yeah, I was excited <laughs> to be. Yeah, I, I can imagine it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then this happened. Now, let's go back to. The conversation you you were having with the uh, conference uh, president. Yes, so I called the conference president and I said, you know, I I was, you know, I'm being bullied by the principal. I didn't use those exact words. I said I would like to talk to you about something about the principal I'm not comfortable with. So he just stopped me and he said, Miss Gangadar, sorry, I do not micromanage BI. That's the name of the school Bermuda Institute. Please reach out to the superintendent. So I reached out to the superintendent. So the superintendent told me, okay, Miss Gangadar, I'm going to set up a meeting with you and the principal and try to, you know, sort out these differences, which I believe as Christians. We should try to do like when you have, you know, issues, you, yeah. you try to have somebody who sit you down, but have the objective of resolution, not the objective of getting a belt and whipping each other. No, that's that's right. not what it's about. So from March, the superintendent has been. So this happened in the first week of March. I think it was March 7th of this year. And so the superintendent has been putting it off. You know, we communicated by WhatsApp sometime on phone calls. And he said, sorry, Miss Gangadar, I have to do this or the principal has to do this. And it was like he set a date, then he then he apologized to me and it kept going on. So March went by, April went by, May went by, June came. June 13th is when they decided to have this meeting. And he had sent me a WhatsApp text that the, the admin also has some concerns along with my concerns. So I said, okay, sure. So on Ju fast forward, June 13th, um, I had been sick with coronavirus. Um, I had it about, I think, you know, I was out for like 10 days. My son didn't get it. You know, thank God. It was just me. So I was out. So I just came back on June 13. I think they, everybody would have been happy to see me. But no, I was called into a meeting on that day, June 13, the second to last day of school, because school closed on June 14, would have been closed on June 14. So on June 13, we had this meeting where the superintendent was um, the coordinator. The principal was there. The vice principal was there and the public relations officer. Now, let me just give you a quick summary of what happened in this meeting. Um, they, from what I gather, they were trying to, just looking back, they said they had concerns, but I don't think it was like they had concerns. They were trying to get rid of me. Mm. Because they said things like, oh, Miss Gangadar didn't turn up for work after so-and-so. So I had to be defending myself. I felt like I was on trial. I had to be taking out my phone, showing my the government positive PCR test. I showed it to the superintendent. He looked at it. He didn't say anything, you know. So I even had to stop and pray during that meeting. And yeah, so and and the and the the superintendent never gave me a chance to speak. So I never got a chance to speak and the meeting ended. And then the next day Yes. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So June 13th um, ended. The meeting ended and we rushed off to um, uh, like a farewell dinner for those who were leaving, including the principal and two other teachers. The principal didn't come to, you know, the farewell, which was shocking for most, um, most of the staff. And, you know, the vice principal during that meeting, he had called me a liar. 
he looked at me in that June 13 meeting. He said, you're lying. You're a liar. And when I went, when I arrived at the, the lunch, I was going to sit at the table and the Holy Spirit said, no, go sit with the VP. He was sitting alone. And I wondered why. Anyway, I, I just went and I said, excuse me, sir, may I sit here? He said, sure. And I sat with him. I felt no hatred. I didn't feel like I had to pretend to love him. Um, I just naturally... You know, because that's what the Bible said. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If what? You if have loved, have loved one for another. So I believe I was showing him that, listen, even though you call me a liar about two hours ago, it has no effect on the way I treat you. Right. You you basically learn to turn the other cheek. Yes. And then I asked the Lord, why did you ask me to sit at the table? The Lord told me I wanted that vice principal to see the character of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You see, um, before you, you go any further, uh, Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse 36 just came to my mind. Uh, well, even verse 27 or verse 25, rather, where Jesus was describing uh, that uh, you know, his mission was to to set the house at variance. He did not come, he says, to bring peace upon this earth, but a, a sword. You know, of course, the sword is the word of God, you know, uh, that uh, that convicts us. You know, it's a two edged sword. It either yeah. cuts us to repentance or it condemns us. And then in verse 36, it says, and a man's foe shall be there of his own household and in your case you have experienced that because what you are sharing with us the household represents the church so you mentioned earlier that you've work, worked for the uh, public school system now let me ask you did you experience anything like that no, when you were not, working at, the not at all. I mean, there was some, but not in this intensity. Uh, okay, another question. Did did you get fired uh, f uh, from the public school system? Oh, no, I, I, I've never, you know, experienced this level of, um, you know, dismissal. No. Right. So apparently, you were treated better within the public school system than within our own brothers and sisters. Yes, and I believe, Pastor Emmanuel, that was what was hurting me a lot because, as I said, this was my first year. Um, something similar happened last year at the public school that I was, but not to this degree. And it hurts more because I was so looking, I was so, as I said, I was excited that I'm coming to a Seventh-day Adventist school. I understand. I understand. Well, a man's foe, as Jesus says, shall be there of their own or her or his own household. And as also Jesus himself and the disciples experience, their, their enemies, their worst enemies, and as Sister White also mentioned, uh, were not the Romans, were the ones who claimed to to believe in the same God, in Jehovah. They were the their worst enemies. And now we see what happened then is being repeated in these last days. But I want to thank God for your strength, for the strength that he has given you, for the courage in spite of everything that you were going through. You stood fast, you, you stood firm, you were in a position to even yield uh, because you you have a family, you have a, a, a child to feed and yourself. You, you could have compromised, right? You could have compromised and look at the, the circumstances, the situation. You just moved to Bermuda. You, you could have taken a, a different route, but you didn't. Amen. Yes. And I just wanted to add to on that same June 13, while I was at the restaurant, while we all the staff was at the restaurant, I, I was getting some food um, to take back for my son, you know, along with some other teachers who were taking back food. And I just felt this sting on my leg. Somebody was slapping my leg. So I turned around and it was one of the ladies that work in the office. 
because you notice my hair is long and when it's hot i was just wiping the neck my neck because it was so hot and she slapped my leg and told me hey people are eating people are eating and i just because i'm coming from taiwan my natural thing i just turned around and i said sorry but you know when i went back to my seat i just pulled up my skirt and i looked at my leg it was red mm mm I, I I felt like crying but I didn't cry like in public right. not not because it hurt that it, it sting but it was red but because of how I'm being treated like who are you to put your hand on me you right. understand what I said what I'm saying right. this is a lady who works in the office she she I don't I'm not sure if she falls under the like administrator but she works she's there with the other administration and, and of course she's a seven adventist of course Christian. everybody who works at the school are seven day adventist Okay. I could never right, put so, my hand on a student, much less as a you know a teacher to a teacher. Right, right. So let's go back now to what happened uh, to you next. Yeah. So on so on June fourteenth, the last day of school, the same lady came to me and you know tried to be mean to me again. Let me just put it at that. The same lady that slapped me tried to be mean with me, and I, you know, I called an admin to say, "Listen, can you interject here?" And she was uncomfortable that I called another admin to see what she was doing. So she stopped, and then I just got an exit. So on June on June fourteen, I usually do a TV program with the health minister, uh, the health ministry leader at the conference. So I have two free sessions for the whole week. So I volunteer. I actually gave up one of my free sessions to do the TV program on health with um, the health ministry. So on Tuesday, June 14, he, called, he texted me and said, are you coming to record today? Now, they had told me that June 13 meeting that I should not record during school hours. I can do it after. So I told the particular doctor that I can't come today because I was told not to come. So he was confused. He said, why? So he told me to speak to a particular pastor that works at the conference, who also has an um He's the executive secretary at the conference. So I said, no, I've seen enough of who these people are. I'm just finished. But he pushed me. He said, you know, go and talk to him. He's sensible. Everybody always say, this pastor is sensible. He's a present truth pastor. So talk to him. So anyway, I reached out to him. He called me back and he said, oh, you said you wanted to talk to me? And I said, oh, yeah, so and so and so. And he said, oh, no, no, no. You needed to get a chance to talk. That was on June 13. You had concerns and nobody heard your concerns. I said, no, they dismissed the meeting. They never let me speak. So he said, don't worry. I'm going to send my HR. My HR is going to take care of it. So the HR came. So on June 16, I had a meeting with the HR and with the same superintendent who didn't support me on Thursday, June 16. So anyway, just like I'm telling you my story now, I told them the story. I told the HR, which was the main person. The superintendent just basically sat in. So they said they're going to, you know, they're going to follow up with me. So they followed up on June 26. I'm trying to check, you know, Sabbath, Sabbath year is 7.33 p.m. You had asked me earlier. So mm -hmm. uh, um, on June 26, I'm just checking my calendar to tell you the date. On June 24, that was two weeks after, about two weeks after school closed, the HR sent me a text message on WhatsApp and she said, we're going to meet with you next week, Tuesday. So I said, okay. Then on June 25th at 11.15 p.m., this was Saturday night, I got a text from the HR asking if I could meet with her tomorrow. She wanted to talk to me, something like that. So I was like, I didn't even see the message until later in the night when I, you know, got up. So I answered her on Sunday morning. I said, yeah, sure, I can meet with you. So anyway, on June 26, we had the meeting. And this was a follow-up meeting. She said, the VI administration is recommending that your contract not be renewed. So I was like shocked. I was like, how wow. can the... How can the BI administration, which is headed by the principal, who not only sexually harassed me, but bullied me and discriminated against me, how can they listen to him making a recommendation that my contract not be renewed? So I was confused. I thought they were going to try to, you know, like solve the issues, talk with them. You know, we apologize. Who needs to apologize? And, you know, try to come to a resolution. That's what I thought based on scripture. You know, right. that's what we do. Anyway, I said, I asked the HR, I said, but why? Why am I, why is this recommendation even being made without, you know? 
So they said to me, and I'm going to summarize because of time, they said to me, because I'm not a cultural fit. I'm not a good cultural fit. Wait, wait repeat that again. They, what was the reason? As I said, I was confused. So I, I had to ask the question, on what basis is this recommendation being made that my contract mm -hmm. not be renewed? Because I'm a high school math teacher. Nothing has ever been said to me. So it was a long pause. She was she went off camera. She came back on. And then she said to me, Miss Gangadar, you're not a good cultural fit. You, a good you cultural fit. fit. Yes, you're not a good cultural fit. You don't fit. That's 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 what she told me. A good cultural fit. That sounds very familiar. Jesus says that they lay aside the commandments of God for the tradition. That would be the cultural, the culture. They lay aside the commandments of God for the tradition of men, which is exactly what they said to you here, but using different words to express the same thing. Go ahead. Right. So I I was just like so confused. But anyway, they spoke to me for a long time. You know, I oh, know I don't think it was a very long meeting, but she said to me, uh, Miss Gangadar, we're not saying that you're leaving. We're just saying a recommendation was made from the administration that your contract not be renewed. Now, tomorrow, the. Yeah, tomorrow, the. The, the the board, the school board and the executive committee is going to vote on this decision. So wait, wait, tomorrow, like, to, tomorrow that's that that would be Sabbath, the 10th of September 2022, right? Oh no, no, is no, no, no. It no no no. It it this now uh, June 26th in the June 26th oh, oh, okay, Sunday okay. meeting. Okay. So all on right, June right. 27, which was the Monday, that that's what the HR was telling me that the school board and the executive committee is going to have an emergency meeting to vote. So okay, like, got it. What, what's happening? Like, I'm like, what? In my mind, I'm more shocked because when I hear a message, I want to process it. And I'm praying and I'm talking to God first. Even though you're sitting in front of me, I'm talking to God first in my heart. And I'm saying, what's going on? So, so let me let, let me interject here for a moment. Uh, uh, my, I, I apologize. Uh, I'm trying to digest this here and trying to think about what happened that required this emergency meeting, as they they called it. All you did was speaking out in regard to Christmas, right? And uh, about dress reform. Was there was there also something about food? Yes, I did. Uh, you know, in Seventy Adventists, we have like a Friday a chapel session every week. Students have chapel, so I was a speaker. My club, I started a club on campus called VI Light Bearers, which is Bermuda Institute Light Bearers. So I was a speaker in January, and I did a presentation on be a light bearer. Now the principal told me when he did my evaluation, three things. It, nothing to do with my high school teaching. And I, I just wanted to answer your question with what right. I'm saying. No, go ahead, go ahead. When, when he did my end of year evaluation, nothing about my high school teaching, um, lesson plan, nothing. Three things he mentioned to me. One, he said you ruffled some feathers in January when you spoke because somebody was offended when you spoke about dress reform and health reform. Wow. So I was like confused. I was like, who? is who is the person that that was offended and why were they offended and they should have followed the matthew 18 i believe matthew 18 method that says if you're you know if you have a problem with your brother you first go to your brother nobody came to me but the principal is telling me that i need to go and restore my relationship with my brothers my brother or my sister and i had mm -hmm. no idea what he was speaking about the second thing he told told me was that um the facilities manager, um, he was asking, what is your relationship with him? Okay. I said, yes. He thought, because he saw me talking about the Bible and spirit of prophecy outside with the workmen, because the the facilities manager had told me to shut up. He, he told me, shut up. And he explained why he's telling me to shut up. He said, if you come to Bermuda, you're not supposed to speak. 
And because I had spoken to our um, our HSA uh, president, um, HSA mean home and school. In some countries, it's called the PTA, Parent Teacher Association, because she came on video to address the entire school population as well as uh, other schools that joined us in a gold chain. Gold and nobody chain. said a gold chain, and nobody said anything. And I commented in the chat. Um, about two two persons were presenting, two Bermudians were presenting, and they were talking about things that were happening in the world, fires, hurricane. So I shared the scripture from Matthew 24 that talks about earthquake, and she kicked me out of the chat. This was an online function at the school. She kicked me out of the chat. So I got her number and I called her and I said, why did you kick me out of the chat? So she said, everybody was distracted by you, you posting a scripture. So I said, Man, that is absolutely not true. Young people these days, they're not going to be distra distracted by a scripture. I can assure you that much. And then I said to her, I, I, are you a Seventh-day Adventist? And she said, yes. I said, oh, I noticed very gently on the phone. I said, I noticed you were wearing a gold chain. So she said to me, oh, the Bible doesn't say we can't wear it. So I said, sister, these are the last days. We have to keep so close to Jesus, um, you know. And I said some like spiritual thing in a very low voice. And then, you know, that was it, our conversation. But I think she went and she spoke about it to other people. So now everybody's saying that, oh, you shouldn't have said anything. Why did you even talk to her about our goal chain? So they said I was out of place. So, so you know, basically you know. they see you as a troublemaker. You, yes. you're, speaking out, you're speaking out against Christmas and you're talking about uh, you, you 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 mentioned dress reform you uh the, the food the diet and then the jewelry which are uh fundamental teachings of seven day adventists we don't believe in wearing jewelries we don't believe in in having a uh having a bad eating habit um uh eating things that are not good for your body uh, we don't believe uh, in celebrating Christmas, uh, which is a pagan holiday. Uh, and also we believe in dress reform. But apparently uh, the school there where you were working at uh, are against you for pointing those things out, for reminding them of our fundamental beliefs. This reminds me of... I. Jeremiah rather, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, which is exactly what you were doing. That would be in Jeremiah chapter 6, uh, verse 16. And also reminded me of Jesus Christ. When he came, he was teaching the people. He was pointing out a few things here and there, but the majority did not want to hear it. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Go ahead. Yes, and then the third thing the principal said to me was my conversation with another sister, another teacher, I call them my sister. I was telling her that we, we just had a personal conversation about the whole jewelry thing. I said, we students cannot wear jewelry on campus. So why should the HSA, the Home and School Association president, which is the PTA president, wear a jewelry and nobody say anything? And I said, we're too wishy-washy Christians. And she was upset, not really upset, but she, she was just saying, I'm too overzealous. She told me, she said, Miss Gangadar, I was where you were. You need to just... Fanatic. You are, you are fanatic. Yes, yes. Like, yeah, basically, but not in those words. But yes, you're, you're, you're overzealous. You're too much. You need to tone down. You need to... And this is just a conversation that I have with just her. You know, I'm passionate mm -hmm. about the doctrines of the Lord. I'm passionate about soul winning, even though I'm a high school math teacher. And I would like to interject that the Lord gave me a vision of the school. He gave me a vision of the school that the school was a valley of dry bones, Ezekiel 37. And this wow. vision he gave me, I can't remember if it was November or December last year, but it was during that period. And I, when I when I got the vision, I reached out to the superintendent because I was told the superintendent is a spiritual pastor. So when I shared it with him, he wasn't so happy. He was like, are you saying that the school is in a something like a spiritual deficit or something like that? I said, I didn't use those words. And he kept repeating himself. And I said, sir, I do not know. This is a vision I got from God. I just came here. I know no one on the island. 
This is just what God showed me. And in fact, I myself, Pastor Emmanuel, I asked the Lord, if the school is a valley of drive on, how can you use me? So they gave me the drama club on top of the, the heavy load that I have. The principal and the PRO, they, I think as a means of punishing me, they gave me, they added more. So they gave me the drama club. Um, came to my door, knock on my door. Miss Gengadar, could you take over the drama club? And I wanted to say no, because I was up to my neck. I'm the only high school math teacher, Pastor Emmanuel. I'm teaching two grade nine, two grade 10, one grade 11, wow. one grade 12. I have two sessions free. I gave up one of them. Remember I told you to help the what? A conference. I was doing the TV program in health. So I was already doing enough. Plus the principal wanted me to do after school. So he was just like putting so much. And um, as you know, I'm a single mom. So I still have to take care of my son. You understand? So they right. in increase my burden. But, you know, I, I just asked the Lord, Lord, help me to be calm. Give me that strength you know i remember reading in the spirit of prophecy he said he will make up those deficiencies i said even though my body's tired lord help me so when i got that that drama club the only thing i did in that drama club was the 10 commandments from i got that club in march i think or whenever to the end of the semester i just did the 10 commandments with those students so you know these are just some of the trials that you know that i face so wow wow and incredible we we have a few minutes left uh le be, but before we we wrap up part one uh, let's go let's quickly go back to uh the 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 meeting uh that they, the the uh, emergency so-called emergency meeting okay. that the, that that they had uh and basically uh quickly what did they say at that meeting i know you started to share with us a little bit what else did they say uh from that meeting okay so quickly on june 27 the executive committee and the school board met which is the highest level board and and pastor emmanuel guess what this was camp meeting during camp meeting so they mm -hmm. met on the monday all the pastors or whoever and they voted me out so on June 27, they voted me out and the HR was trying to call me. To meaning, set up a meeting. meaning if you got fired. Yes, basically. They didn't mm -hmm. use that word. They said non-continuance, not non-renewal of your contract. But basically, I got fired right. on June 27. And then the HR was trying to, to have a meeting with me 8 p.m. on Monday night. I said, ma'am, I put my son to bed at 8 p.m. So I said, can we meet on Tuesday? So on Tuesday, they met with me. And she said, the, the school board voted you out. So what we're going to do, we're going to repatriate you and your son back to your country of origin. So I said to her, meaning, I, meaning going back to Jamaica. Yes. I said, ma'am, I've left Jamaica over 13 years ago. I don't have anywhere to go there. Uh, and she said, OK, maybe you can go to England. And I was like, are they for real? Like, I don't know anybody in England. I don't have a job in Jamaica or England. It's now the end of June. Um, I already spent money. I was supposed to be in Jamaica, mind you, because I went to the airport on June 19. But because I didn't have the Canadian visa, I, I came back home because I was trying to go, you know, tr to go through Canada because you don't have to take the, you know, the uh, Babylonian, Babylonian poison. poison. So so basically on June 28, they told me that, yes, I was dismissed from the school. And I had written a letter because I had asked him, can I represent myself? On that Monday, they said, no, but you can write a letter. So I wrote a letter and the HR told me your letter was not given to the people who voted you out. And the reason they didn't present the letter that I wrote was because they said it had sexual harassment in it. And she said, you, Ms. Gangadar, deliberately put sexual harassment on the first on, in the first of the letter. And that's why we couldn't give the members of the executive committee and the school board. But of that. course, that was not true. You did not do such a thing. No, but I told them on June 16, everything. Right, right. Yes. Wow. So on, wow. on July 1st, I got the formal dismissal letter. And not when I got it, <laughs> it was filled with lies. The breaking of the ninth commandment. So maybe I'll pick up from there. Yeah. The so, time. wow. I in incredible. I, we we were told that these things will take place. Uh, Jesus says, 
if they have done this to me, they will also do them unto you. And as we read from the book of Mark chapter 11, uh, which, which sounds similar to what you've been experiencing there. And by the way, you are still there in the country of Bermuda. You, you haven't left the island yet. And in verse 27, the Bible says, And they come again to Jerusalem. And as Jesus was walking in the temple, they come to him, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? Who gave thee this authority to do these things? So basically, they were questioning you, who gave you the authority to do those things. But I want to thank God once again, as I mentioned, for your strength, for your determination, for your courage, the passion, the love for souls that you have in your heart, and uh, for using Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1, with, which cry tells aloud. us to <laughs> cry aloud. Spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, a trumpet, and show my people their sins in the house of Israel their transgressions. And Sister uh, Gabrielle, I would like to thank you for sharing your testimony with us because our people need to know, they need to know what is going on in our church. We have been informing them, Amazing Word Ministries and a few others have been informing uh, what uh, our people, what is transpiring in the world, you know, how the crisis, the movements that are taking place are leading us very rapidly uh, to the final crisis, which is the Sunday law, the mark of the beast crisis. But at the same time, just like Jesus said to the disciples, go not in the way of the Gentiles or the Samaritan, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. We have many lost sheep within the house of Israel. And I believe your testimony, your courage, the strength that the Lord has given you, I believe it will help to awaken many of those lost sheep within the house of Israel. We want to thank you once again for joining us. And before we uh, say goodbye to each one of you, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father God, which art in heaven, Father, forgive us of our sins. Forgive your people. I pray for the leaders there in Bermuda. They, are, they have been blinded by the enemy. And as Jesus says on the cross, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they have done. Lord, I pray for forgiveness for them. I pray that they will open their heart and they will allow your spirit to come in. And to realize, to recognize what they have done to this dear sister and her son. Lord, I pray for my dear sister in a special way and her son. I pray that you would continue to provide, to strengthen her, to encourage her. No matter how fierce the battle may get, and we know it will get worse, that she will continue to keep her head above water knowing that you will never leave her nor forsake her. We Amen. pray also that you would bless your people now. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sister. God bless you.